Hello students, this is Dr. Fezan Mirza. Here I am discussing with you how solitary conduction occurs and how continuous conduction occurs. So what's solitary conduction, what's, uh, what's uh, uh, continuous conduction? To understand this, let's go to the basics here. So uh, once we know this is this is the cut section of an exon cut lengthwise, you can see the internal region of the exon is having a negative charge because of the sodium potassium pump functioning. Three sodiums go out, two potassiums enter by active transport. So the internal region becomes negatively charged. Inside the cell, there is a low sodium concentration and a high potassium. Outside, there is a reverse condition, which is having a high sodium concentration and a low potassium. And since sodium potassium pump is working by active transport, it keeps sending three sodium ions out and brings two potassium ions in. The net deficit of one positive charge uh, inside cause a relatively negative environment to be established into the cell. Uh, now this this re, this uh, exon here which I am drawing here this is a myelinated exon you can see Schwann cells which are wrapped around and they form myelin here and there's node of Ranvier as well so uh, why we know we know that myelin sheet speeds up the neuronal communication so what ex exactly is happening this is neurolemma this is the membrane called neurolemma so what happens here um, only the node of Renvier is they undergo depolarization and repolarization. The region which is covered with the myelin sheath or with the Schwann cell, it doesn't allow any ion exchanges to occur. So the only region through which repolarization or depolarization and any exchange of ions can occur is all across just the node of Renvier. So this is why this impulse is transmitted in much quicker manner because just the node of Renvier have to depolarize. So you can say that the, this, this is impulse coming here. So this node of Renvier, it got depolarized. Uh, initially, this was at negative potential, but then sodium ions entered. So the, this became positive. You can see that at the, the node of Renvier, which are yet to follow, they are still not depolarized. So as the impulse keeps, forming, uh, keeps moving forward, so the next node of Renvier becomes depolarized and then the next get depolarized. And in this case, when the wave of depolarization keeps trailing ahead, localized circuits develop. When localized circuits develop, what are localized circuits? Local circuits are the ones which are being developed because of the charges which are opposite uh, at adjacent node of Renvier. If, if it's a positive charge here, there's a negative charge here. If it's a positive charge here, a negative charge here. Similarly, a positive charge here and a negative charge here. So this, this caused the uh, localized circuit to be established between two adjacent node of Renvier. And when the localized circuit establishes, so this localized circuit caused the uh, impulse to move ahead in the forward direction. So this is called as solitary conduction. Solitary conduction is always very fast because only the node of Renvier have to undergo depolarization and repolarization. As the impulse keeps uh, moving forward, the previous node of Renvier, they undergo repolarization and they become recovered. What is continuous conduction? In continuous conduction, we do not have myelin sheath wrapped around the exon. So the entire exon is, is exposed and uh, we have every part of the membrane undergoing depolarization and repolarization um, there's, there are, there's no concept of local circuits. Every part of the membrane must undergo sodium ions entering and potassium ions leaving and so on and so forth. And this obviously takes a longer time. That's why unmounted exons, uh, which, uh, which, which, which allow continuous conduction to occur, they, they transmit much slower the impulses as compared to a malignated exon, which allows solitary conduction to take place. So here I am discussing with you cases for this is again the same localized circuit shown to you. So the localized circuit shows that sodium is entering at one node of Renvier and potassium is going out and just across this a local circuits develop and, and the impulse keeps moving ahead. So impulse moves ahead and again the previous node of Renvier keeps uh, allowing potassium to go out. Uh, this, this node of Renvier is becoming deep, is, is becoming repolarized whereas this one is depolarized right now. As the local circuit from this node of Renvier will jump to the next node of Renvier, we'll have potassium ions leaving from this node of Renvier and sodium ions entering into the cell from this node of Renvier. So this is how the local circuit just keeps moving ahead and solitary conduction is always the fastest. So when the membrane is not actually generating any action potential, we have the membrane potential staying at minus 70 or minus 90, whatever the RMB value is, so it stays there. If the stimulus here is there, we see a peak of depolarization and then repolarization. This is how the stimulus can be differentiated from no action potential and the stimulus being there. Now, if you compare the strength of stimulus, if there is a weak stimulus, this is how the wave patterns are forming in our neurons when there's a weak stimulus. We have waves which are a bit distant, bit distant to one another. The refractory period is longer, which means that the frequency of these, uh, in, these waves being generated is, is, uh, is uh, you can say, uh, the frequency is, is low and the refractory period is high, whereas where the, where the stimulus is very strong, we have waves which are very close together, which means there is a, there's a higher frequency of waves being generated, there's a lot of action potential being generated, the refractory period is, is narrowed, 
and the frequency is higher. So this is how the our central nervous system to central nervous system distinguish a weak stimulus from a stronger stimulus. Here you can see the uh, effect of uh, effect of increasing the diameter of the myelinated axon in micrometer. So if you increase the diameter of myelinated axon in micrometer, you have a linear relationship in conduction velocity. So as the conduction velocity increase, sorry, as the diameter increase, the conduction velocity increase linearly because there are more channels available for ion exchange to occur. So that that promotes a very quick uh, quick exchange, and since we only have the node of Ranvier's where the exchange is occurring, so this uh, this this rises gra this lean it's linear rise. Now just compare this with the diameter of an unmyelinated axon. An unmyelinated axon is having a very large diameter as compared to myelinated. You can see it's in hundreds, two hundred, four hundred, six hundred, and so on and so forth. Here the conduction velocity increases, but not linearly. It increases and eventually it starts to just slow down. Not it doesn't increase as much as it was increasing initially. So why is this so? Because as the as you increase the diameter, there are no more number of channels there which are there. So the every every membrane protein, every channel must it must allow ions to enter or exit. Only then the impulse can go ahead from that point to the next point. That's it from my side. Thank you so much.